Thanks for staying with us. Now, Uzoma Doze is one of Nigeria's leaders in the financial sector and the last group managing director of Diamond Bank Nigeria. He is the founder of Sparkle, a mobile first platform for Nigeria's retail sector using technology to power financial inclusion at scale. At Diamond Bank, Uzoma was responsible for overseeing the corporate and commercial arms of the bank. He holds a BSc in Chemistry, University of Reading, and an MSc in Chemical Research, UCL, and an MBA from Imperial College London. Uzama runs Angel Investment and Mentorship Platform, that's Black Knight, and also Tech Focus TV Tech Talks, hmm, where he interviews leading entrepreneurs and digital pioneers. So our focus today is to know the man behind these many hats as we attempt to define success, anchoring on his journey. So you can join this conversation, tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081. 8038463. So I've never seen a phone <laughs> see you. <laughs> but you know what? Before I bring in Uzoma Doze, quickly, Temi and Uti and Isi, if you had one thing to describe Uzoma Doze, what would that be? <laughs> Let me come to Temi first. <laughs> I think he's fly. I think he's very fly. Uh -huh. He's the like fly CEO. Because I remember, you know, I have three friends that were really senior officers in Diamond Bank. And I, you know, one of them told me that he said they needed to undress the dress code. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. Correct. He's fly. Okay, he's fly. <laughs> Uti, do you agree? <laughs> What's your word? Um, well, I'm just going to say, uh, I'm just a simple phrase. All black, everything. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, interestingly, Uti, I was going to wear, I had one an all black dress. I said, no, boy, it's too, tip it's too typical. I mean, that's very, very <laughs> typical of Uzoma Duze. So I'm not going to wear black. I will, mix, I will mix it with a little bit of blue. <laughs> How about you, Isi? I'll say he's charming. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want <to> charm us. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Uzoma Jose. Thank you for having me. You know what? Mm. So because we posted the flyer that we're going to be hosting our mm -hmm. CEO for the month of January, and in fact, <laughs> nobody can avoid this question because that's the biggest elephant in the room. <laughs> and, you know, I think that a lot of people are not open to change. A lot of people, um, they, get, they get glued to something and they are very comfortable. But you're not that kind of CEO because everybody on earth said, what was he thinking? Letting go of Diamond back. And that has been the thing that has been in our heads, drumming up and all of that. So maybe you want to start from there. <laughs> oh, I, I, let's, yeah, let's get the elephant out of the room. Yes, and then we please. We can have a frank discussion. So, so, I mean, like it's very, very simple. You know, like... I mean, I mean, to do, to do that, you, have, you would have had taken into consideration all the stakeholders. And mm -hmm. for us at Diamond Bank, Diamond Bank started as a family, family organization. And, and my father, when he started it, all he was, wanted to make sure was all the stakeholders were looked after during and after. And in taking that decision, we actually looked at all the stakeholders involved. The first one was always the customer, because the customer is the ones that actually made us. The second, uh, the people, in fact, they were all people, uh, the um, staff, and also regulators as well, because we're working, we're, we're in an environment. And when I look at it, when we look at it, when I look at, um, so what did we want to do? What did we want to do? Looking at knowing where the world was going to, we wanted to create a bigger platform. Yeah. Um, we wanted to complement, take the best of retail and the best of corporate, and create a platform that we would say that would out that would outlive individuals. Mm -hmm. And I think we did that by creating the biggest bank based on customers. Mm -hmm. And you could hear in the news a, a few days ago what they are doing and what, what they plan to do. So mm -hmm. that, that still lives on. From a, from, an, from a staff perspective, which is actually the big problem, mm -hmm. one of the promises that we made, and believe me, we went around the country. One of the promises that we made was that there was a place for every single person in the new entity. Hmm. We were taking the best, and nobody was laid off. This was not one of those um, Western world um, mergers where you say we're merging and we're looking for efficiencies. We said nobody's nobody. going to get laid off. We're going to look at the data, and we're, we're not even closing any branches, which we could have done because we had a lot of duplications, and we did that. And from an investor perspective, they got a good payday. I mean, you can, and so like, I even had a call. I mean, of course, these things are very, you know, like, it's like a marriage. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> this is a very, very traumatic because they are life changing. Mm -hmm. And exactly. you know, two years later, speak to any investor and ask them if they are sad about the investment. So, I mean, like, you know, you can't please everyone, but you look at the core people, the core stakeholders, and the core people here are the customers, and they're happy. I know a lot of people are not going to be happy because people don't like change. Nigeria is a place where we don't like change. Mm. But you know, I look at the last 12 months, and so like, I can I can bet I can bet you that everyone's pl plans on 1st of January of what they were going to do in, in 2020 was completely wrong. Mm -hmm. And they're completely wrong now. And if you ask anybody today, what are you doing in 2021? They don't know. So we're now in a world of change. Mm. And when we think, and like, if you, and I, I can, I can, I, think I, I, I can, I can say that the new entity is much stronger. So you need a stronger platform mm -hmm. during um, volatile time. It's like a storm. Mm -hmm. And so a sm small ships sink, bigger sh ships float. Mm -hmm. And so in 2021, um, I can tell you that small the new ships. entity is a bigger ship <laughs> and the, the probability of survival is going to be bigger. And, mm -hmm. that, and, and, and that's the most important thing. You have to take care of the bigger numbers and not people and people, life is not perfect, and that's why life is exciting. Because mm -hmm. people always have, you're going to have, you're going to have voices that are completely different. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they come to easy, then I'll come to Uti. Okay. So, um, as a CEO, what is your greatest strength as a CEO, as a leader? What's your greatest strength? I, I think the greatest strength is actually letting go, hmm. trusting people, because I mean, like you are paying. Well, let me find a better word. You're paying a lot of money to hire people to run businesses. And then you have to let go, let them do their stuff, let them trust people. And so to like letting job. go and trusting that they'll do their job. Mm. And if they don't, having the courage, mm. right, to say, all right, I'm sorry, give you a chance, you have to go. Because in the end, I mean, when you're running a big enterprise or when you're running a small enterprise, you can't do everything by yourself I because it exactly. is not sustainable. Mm. So mm. There, are, there are many hats you have to wear. You have to wear, you know, the heart that says no all the time. You have to wear the heart that encourages. You have to wear the heart that is very, very aggressive. So it's knowing also when to, when to use, wear the different hats. Absolutely. Let me come to Uti. Eli. <laughs> Hi, Uzoma. So, Hi, Uti. Uh, Happy I, New I Year's. The, I'm good, thank you. Good to see you. It's been a while. <laughs> um, I, would, I would like to ask, um, our call today talked about failure. And when I look at um, recently, Elon Musk has overtaken um, as the richest man in the world. And you have to sort of think about his story and the way failure has impacted him. So I would like to ask you what your biggest failure has been and how has that gotten Uzoma to where he is today as the Chief Sparkler? Hmm. Very interesting question. Nobody asked me that. I mean, I mean, like, every time I think I've had a big failure, I get, I mean, like, you know, I mean, like my biggest fail. I think, for me, failure is part of part of part of a journey. So, so I don't see failure as a failure is when you don't actually take lessons from the event. Now, you know, I I, uh, I think I I I um, did a blog like a few weeks ago where I talked about like I, I, ran, I was rambling and I was talking about failure. And when in my when I was doing a masters, I spent a year in a lab, and I think I did about. An experiment every day, so like over 200 experiments, and 90% of them failed. Hmm. Only a few passed, but I still, I still got my 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 my, MB, my my master's degree, and that was because I failed the experiment. I recorded it. I hmm. I, I captured the learnings so that other people would not fail. Make the same We're mistake. making the same mistake. So my biggest failure would be not recording events, right? The things that have happened that, you know, why didn't I record that? Because that is, that, if I don't record that, that means somebody else is going to actually fall into that trap. So I think that, that's where failure is. I, I, and I, and in, in, um, in our society, we see failure as a stigma. And I think we need to change that mm -hmm. mindset. I think it's testing. And so, I mean, at, I mean like, at at um, Sparkle today, I mean, like, when, one of the things we want to do is test a lot. We test some things. I mean, like, the biggest failure is just saying, you know, I'm going to throw all my resources 
<laughs> you can only be testing when there's money to test. Because yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. Yeah. if you are in a, if you, if you mm -hmm. have a very tight economy, sometimes yeah. you really cannot afford to make certain kinds of errors because it might be mm. too expensive yes. for you to be able to test. But I totally agree with you. But sometimes I think it's people just wake up in the morning and just throw all their resources into without actually testing. Mm. Now testing it means I mean testing is so like I have a million naira mm -hmm. and I think that this is something I want to do, right? Mm. I would take a hundred or two hundred thousand naira and test, and if it fails, if it fails, because you have to actually incorporate that into that whole process. You mm -hmm. can't just make it. That's gambling, mm -hmm. right? Without actually testing to find out if if the market, if if, if it has market acceptability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you find that in other organized structured organizations, mm -hmm. first of all, they do a lot of testing, and I believe that's what they call research. Mm -hmm. You know, they call it research. They call it, you know. Um, a green site testing and that's because you go to a location test tube so like it's like being in a lab you say okay you know what i think this might work let's go and test let's have mm -hmm. focus groups and let's mm -hmm. do that and let's not bet all our money mm -hmm. on that and like you know i've read a few books on even on uh, entrepreneurship and 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 you know going our startups mm -hmm. and say I, there, there are rules to this you don't just wake up and just say you know i think this is right and i'm going to do it no it's mm -hmm. like okay this is my resources right I must test it. Mm -hmm. And then you also incorporate failures into it. Yeah. And the, the people that do it best are actually banks. So banks say, are like, say you know what, um, I'm going to lend X, Y, Z to this, this, to, this, um, to this community, this segment of people. Mm. The risk of people who are not going to pay me back about 20%, and they actually factor it into the pricing. Mm. And that's failure. They've actually done that, but they don't see that as failure. But it is actually... Saying, you know, they call it risk taking. Risk taking, Absolutely. right? And, yeah, and you, and you must take risk to, to you must take risk to make return. There is no, there's nothing in life, right? Mm. That if you don't, if you if you don't play, you don't win. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, let me come to Tammy. Hi, Zuma. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> um, so just talking about leadership, <laughs> leadership as a skill, as a competency now, uh, just to touch on that, you know. So to my mind, uh, Diamond Bank was an institution of many firsts. You know, I remember your digital banking app was released mm -hmm. and it was up there in terms of, you know, user experience and functionality. Um, I also, you know, worked in SME banking some 10 years ago. And I know that Diamond Bank was one of the banks that essentially heralded um, SME finance as we know it today in the industry. Because, I mean, doing competitor research and analysis, you know, we always had to look at Diamond, you know. So what was it like being the CEO, um, sitting in a room with your people and galvanizing them into action to champion new initiatives? Because I recognize that while some of those initiatives were, you know, successful and groundbreaking in the industry, there must have been many failures as well. You know, so how did you manage the failures? How did you buy their trust? You know, how did you manage to get them working on something new, especially um, after, you know, previous strategy didn't pan out? Well, I think I was fortunate. I mean, that's a great question. I think I was fortunate because I'd been in Diamond Bank for a while and I'd risen, like, from the, the ground up. So a lot of people knew me. But I also, and I think it's also being able to sell. You have to sell, and you have to be able to garner trust, and you have to put your. You have to lead from the front. You know, one of my, I always say, one of my um, role models, who is all the, uh, most of them are actually dead, is like Alexander the Great, mm -hmm. and you will see that. I mean, like, how can such how can such a small nation conquer half of the world? And that's because he led from the front, right? Mm -hmm. And that's because you know he knew everybody that he worked with, and that he was able to you know, con uh, create a bond. Now, uh, so. And to do that, you have to really uh, put yourself in the role, mm -hmm. and one and so like want to do it for them. I, for me, I, I think one thing that um, I was very passionate about was retail because I thought because I think that it is a place where you can impact lives, and it's a place where you, and, and those are the returns that you can get. And so it it was an easy sell for me, and like. I, I think as a leader, you have to have a, you have to be able to see the future. Mm -hmm. So not from that jazz perspective, <laughs> but you know, being able to like picture yourself in the future and seeing, okay, how how is the world going to be mm -hmm. in five years' time mm -hmm. if I do this, and how are people going to use my solutions? And to tell you the truth, we I wanted a mobile app that I could use 
outside banking. I went to the mobile app. You made us fall in love with yeah. mobile app. Yeah, yeah. I went to, I went to, no, I went to, abandoned us halfway. Know, the truth about banking, the truth, <laughs> the truth about banking is that, my, and this is my personal perspective, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get a flag, is that banking doesn't, doesn't need human beings there. And so I wanted, because the whole idea of, I think, one of our values is freedom, right? Freedom to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. And the only way to do it is actually being in control of your life. And that's why, you know, that's why people ask me, why do you like technology? Why do you like digital? Because it allows you to be an effective leader. It allows you to lead without actually, um, without actually, uh, what, what that was again? I can't, I can't remember it because I don't do it anymore. I don't have to do it anymore without actually <laughs> looking at what everybody is doing because yeah. you can do it and ask questions. And so, so, so it was, it was, and it was also creating an enabling environment to, to test and to fail. And once you can do that, and once you can tell people like we're going to test it, and if it doesn't work, we'll try it. It's not cast in stone. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of communication, and I think that's what we were able to achieve. And that's why, you know, we were, and like it was difficult at times too because you also don't forget you also have people who have done. Um, banking from a commercial perspective. Mm -hmm. And now you're telling people, let's do it the retail way. And the retail way is actually taking bigger risks because you're saying, you know, I'm going to lend to these millions of people mm -hmm. and I'm not going to be looking at each credit. I'm actually going to look at it from a very for, 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 for portfolio perspective. Okay. perspective. Okay. Very, people, very difficult for people to change that mindset. Mm -hmm. But once you started doing it and once you start seeing the, the, the positive numbers and you start communicating that, then people buy into it. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a, I mean, we did, we did some very interesting first mm -hmm. in Diamond Bank. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I remember when I, mean, when, when I, I think I woke up one day and said, you know what, okay, from um, the, I, I think it was uh, from the 16th of, uh, 16th of February, um, we're not going to use check, checks in, checks in, um, in, in the Diamond Bank, hall. in the banking hall. We're not going to use, I can't remember, we're not going to, and we're not going to go to the banking hall as staff. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to use mobile. Because yeah. you can't be preaching mobile, and then, yeah. and then when the system is down, you go to the banking hall. So you, we're actually going to leave the journey of those customers who have said, you know, we have a mobile app user. So when the mobile app is down, you two are you down. And down. then we will respond much quicker. Mm -hmm. And it was very successful. And, you know, initially it was, I mean, how are we going to, how, are we going to, like, how, can, how can we live without checks? How can we live without paper? Six months later, nobody cares about it. Nobody, people begin to see it as an intrusion in their life. So, so people don't like change, but when you create a, an environment where things are changing and you have leadership that is actually walking the talk, then it's so much easier to actually actually succeed. Okay, so we're going to go on a break. Okay. Yeah. Because you see, this thing you talked about, environment. So for me, I think, do you think that you created, um, how do I put it now, an independent uh, or how do I put it? You know how you, you, you are shielding your staff to the point that they get so comfortable, comfortable. you know? So your style of leadership, you know, because you are a very big risk taker. Mm. I can see you are the one that will go for bungee jumping and all of those <laughs> kind of things, you know? You, you seem to me like somebody that you can just get up and, you know, take a decision and just go. But, you, but in that, your style... You've also been able to house people in a way that they are so comfortable around you. Mm. But when you are now taking your decision, you just, uh, and you go. So all those people that you have created, so do you think that style of leadership, you know, it's, it's effective in actually building independent minds within an organization where they can say, you know what, I think I'll just do two years here and I go. But you're going to answer that after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>